Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Laurie here. And Andreas here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk with Andreas about real estate here in uh, Ihihik Lake Chapala area and uh, see an update and see what's actually happening here uh, in his experience. So uh, Andreas, how long have you been in the real estate business? Um, um, uh, first of all, I mean, um, uh, my name is Andres Velasquez. Um, I'm a certified real estate agent working for Ajiji Real Estate. And I have uh, been living here in the area for 45 years. I'm from Guadalajara. And I have a uh, 17 years experience working in real estate. Recently, okay. what have you seen in the real estate market here uh, with properties? Are, are they uh, pro properties going up in value? Are they going down in value? Are uh, more people coming in and they want to buy it? What's, what's the general sense of what's happening here? Let's say now versus say a year ago. No, after uh, COVID and when everybody gets back to work, we started having um, three years of uh, one of the best sales for three years. And uh, maybe the best sales, the best sales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so during that time, we had a lot of demand. We don't have a, that much properties to offer. So the prices uh, went up, uh, let's say, between five and 50 percent more of the wow. value. But most of them, they were selling uh, full price, for oh. full price, I mean. But the last year, 2023, so we had a, a slowdown in sales. Mm. Um, right now, there's a lot of uh, properties uh, reducing the, the price. Mm. So I think that now um, prices are going to go back to the real price as before COVID, mm. and now it's going to be the buyer's market. Mm. So you're seeing a switch from from like a bubble that had a bubble where they, yeah, people, right. uh -huh. people were buying even to the point of uh, paying full price, uh, wasn't negotiating, and maybe even at, offering a higher price than what was uh, uh, the market or what, what they were asking for the mm -hmm. property. And now things have slowed down. and. Uh, so what do you think percentage-wise that it's gone down? Uh, it's it hasn't gone down 50%. No, 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 no. I think that uh, prices, I mean, uh, during COVID, the prices increased from 5 to 15%. So I think that they are going to go down almost uh, the same to 15% mm -hmm. or something like that. Because we don't have too many people buying right now. Mm -hmm. Before that, we had a lot of demand, and right now, there's a lot to offer, but we don't have uh, people who wants to buy. Okay, so people aren't coming in and buying yeah, right now. Yeah, I, I know that uh, people, I mean, don't feel, you know, to come to Mexico because they cannot get the same money as before. So, Andreas, can you give our viewers here uh, an idea of what, let's say, a property was selling for maybe three or four months ago mm -hmm. and uh, what it would be selling for now? Do you have an example maybe on your listings? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk, for example, one that is across from where I live in El Limón, in San Juan Cosala. It was listed before for um, 495,000. It's a nice property with a lake view, big yard, mm -hmm. and uh, I listed for 449,000. 449. So it went from 490, did you say? For, uh, from uh, 495. 490. To 449. To 449. Okay. I mean, it's uh, around 50,000 mm -hmm. US. So, but you can see that difference, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it, they will take a, a lower offer on that property. Mm -hmm. okay. Now they want to sell. They want to <laughs> sell. So now this year, 2024, mm -hmm. uh, what's the difference in your closing ratio versus last year? say at the same time okay let's talk about the same uh, high season that is between october and april mm -hmm. i sold around 10 properties during that period and now since last year till now i just sold four okay 
So you, I, I understand you. That's about a six month window in the high season. Mm -hmm. You sold about 10. Mm -hmm. Now, this year, from January till, uh, till, till July. To July, yeah. Yeah, you have sold four, four properties. properties. Okay, only. okay. So, okay, that's quite a bit. And I mean, and it's about that uh, there's no people buying, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of a sad. But right now, with the lake being so low, mm -hmm. and uh, people have been indicated that there's been more of a water shortage, what seems to be the general feeling about that here? You've lived here for so long, you've probably seen different levels of the lake going up and down, and if that even affects the water table. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, uh, right now, a lot of uh, people are suffering of uh, water supply mm -hmm. most uh, most of the water that we get in the whole towns and cities around the lake it's about deep wells and uh, the deep wells also depends on the level of the lake mm -hmm. for example in my experience uh, where i live uh, we have a deep well and uh, every time that the lake uh, goes down we need to dig a little bit more deeper and the water that we are getting is less then we get it, you know, like now that the, wait, the rainy season is coming. Mm -hmm. So I suffer a little bit. I mean, the whole community where I live because we don't have uh, too much water. Now, uh, in generally in this area here, most people are on municipal water. They're on, they're on the regular water system. But also the municipality, I mean, the water from the municipality mm -hmm. is about also deep wells. Okay, okay. Chapala, Jiji, uh, San Juan Cozalajo, Cotepec, all them, they have deep wells. Right mm -hmm. now they are, for example, digging uh, one in Jocotepec, in one of the main avenues of Jocotepec, because they are suffering of a lack of water. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, Jocotepec, they are having a big uh, mm -hmm. trouble with uh, water supply. Mm -hmm. So now with so much building going on in this area, I mean, it's, I mean, every place we walk, there's a new lot and people are building on it and stuff. Um, what about the infrastructure? What about the, uh, you know, the sewers? You know, what about, let's say, water? You know, in other words, you've mentioned the wells. Mm -hmm. so more people are using that water than the sewer system. Uh, is the building department making sure that they're all upgraded to, to you know, to handle, let's say, the extra sewer? problems and stuff like that, or maybe uh, sewage treatment plants. What's happening in that area? A person coming in and wants to buy. I mean, right now there's only a few uh, sewer plants that are working. I know that uh, maybe we are not uh, taking care or getting ready, uh, you know, to have more places with sewer. Ajijic is growing so much, mm -hmm. you know, all the areas are growing so much. And I think that we are not prepared, you know, for all that uh, building, all that mm -hmm. uh, properties coming up and people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be a, a issue. So Andreas, you know, what advice would you give, say a, a young couple or whoever wants to move in Mexico, they want to live their dream. They will, they've heard about Mexico and how great it is. And what, what advice would you give them, you know, of coming in and getting established? What, what would you recommend? Okay, I mean, for example, at my, at my office every Monday, we have a newcomer seminar. It's always at 10 a.m. And uh, during that seminar, we talk about real estate, we talk about uh, hospitals, uh, places, migration, we touch different kind of uh, topics for people that uh, have the idea to stay here or to buy or whatever. And then uh, Wednesdays, we have a home tour. We choose uh, five uh, of our listings, different prices, different locations. So we took them for a tour and uh, it's kind of like a first step to see what you can get for your money. Uh -huh. And if you are thinking about buy. Okay. And uh, also, of course, they can hire you mm -hmm to have a different view of uh, a hikik. You have a lot of experience too, and you can also help them. Mm -hmm. See, I don't sell real estate. I know. You know <laughs> and so I can give you an objective maybe that uh, 
you may not get. So, uh, but uh, the through my location service that I offer, a full day with me going around, and we we go uh, along the whole uh, area of uh, Chapala. It's about a 13 mile area from Chapala to Hultatepec, and we can look at different uh, areas and different villages. Give you a little, maybe a little bigger perspective than you would get on a uh, the, your home tour one. Of course, uh, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh -huh. So another question Andrea said, a lot of people want to know, what's the legal requirements that somebody has to have coming to move to Mexico? Somebody new wanting to move, what can they expect? Okay, I mean, uh, to buy property in Mexico, first, of course, you need the, the money. So you need cash. You need cash, yeah, because uh, here in Mexico, if you want to get a credit, it's not easy for foreigners. And also it's too expensive. It can be from 12 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. So it's really expensive. So you need cash. The other thing that you need is your tourist visa. You're saying that actually a person can come in here on a tourist visa, 180 day visa, mm -hmm. and actually buy a piece of property? Yes. Okay, that's interesting. So you don't have to be a temporal or a permanent resident. To buy, no. No. To buy property, you don't have to to sell, yes. To sell, yes. So you don't pay I mean, you again. can sell um, not being temporary or permanent resident, but then you will have capital gains mm. and they are kind of uh, expensive. Mm. They can be maybe the 33 or 34 percent. Wow. <laughs> so mm. it's better that you get your temporary or permanent visa if you want to sell. How do they work here, the title? Is there title companies here? Uh, A notary here is a lawyer. So um, a notary always check both parties between the seller and the buyer. Mm -hmm. So he check all the paperwork before closing. He check the, the deed, that there's no liens. A lot of uh, things that is part of his job and you pay it uh, included in your um, closing costs. Another question is, what about property taxes here in Mexico? Okay, the, for example, uh, the property tax bill, of course, is not the same cost as in the States. But let's make an example. For example, a house that is uh, value 300,000 uh, US dollars, you will pay around 6,000 pesos a year mm -hmm. of property tax. That mm -hmm. is nothing. So here, that's about $300 to $400 mm -hmm. for a Three hundred thousand dollar home. Mm -hmm. That's property. why you pay six thousand pesos. That is nothing. I mean, comparing to the states, I know that is very expensive. Well, great, Andreas. This has been good. I really appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your uh, integrity. You know, dealing with with people. I get feedback all the time because I recommend you. Thank you. I know that. <laughs> I get feedback from from people who use your service and bought from you. You know and how much they enjoy your professional you know, approach to real estate. So thank you, I appreciate that. No, thank you much. <laughs> I mean, thank you, I really appreciate it, uh, Jerry. Thank you, Lori, also. It's <laughs> always a pleasure to be with you and... Okay, adios. Adios. <laughs> if you would like to contact Andreas, I'll put his description and information in the description down on the bar below and he can get back with you and answer any of your questions about moving to Mexico and he is the greatest. Fridays 5 p.m. California time check out new videos see the pop-up on the right that's me and if you'd like to subscribe just touch on my picture on the left the pop-up book now if you'd like to book a relocation tour with me book there